Welcome back. In the last video we created uh, Mr. Donatello and we uh, put him in the, the closet of the main hall uh, by assigning his starting X and starting Y locations uh, in the main hall. In this video we're going to talk a little bit about what AGS calls timers and we're going to use that timer to have uh, Mr. Donatello sort of yelling at Sammy from within the closet saying, you know, let me out of the closet. Um, so we're going to do that with timers. But before we get into that, I want to actually address um, an error that I did in the last video. Um, if you just take what I did in the last video and try to run it, I'm just going to click run here, you get an error. And it says there were compilation errors. See the output window for details. So if I click OK, now it's opened up a new output window down at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to expand that out so we can talk about it and I'll show you how to fix this if you ever get this error. Um, it says unexpected error, string is too long, v Donatello normal, max length equals 14. Well what that is, that's referring to the view that we created, the view uh, Donatello normal view. Uh, and it says max length equals 14. What it's saying is this is, a, this is too long. Uh, AGS allows you to have a maximum of 14 letters when you're assigning, or 14 characters when you're assigning a, a view name. So that's easily fixable. Let's go up to the, to the project tree, expand views. Now I'm going to right click on V Donatello normal and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to take out a couple of letters. It's actually 16 characters right at this point. So I'm going to take out the vowels here for normal and that'll reduce it down to exactly 14. And I'm going to do the same thing for V Donatello speech because it's 16 characters as well. So I'm going to take out those. So now we fix the error. So now if we click run it should run fine. And it does. And you can see Mr. Donatello is in the closet just where we told him to be. And notice too that he, that the other characters obey the uh, walk behind areas too. I uh, notice that the walls are being drawn on top of Mr. Donatello. So, you know, it's not just Sammy, it's objects and everything else that obeys the walk, the, uh, the walk behind areas. Great. So we've done that. Now let's, um, let's have Mr. Donatello uh, yell a couple things from in the closet. Well, the first thing we want to do is put a closet door here um, because right now he, he doesn't need to yell anything to, to Sammy because he's not really trapped in the closet at this point. There's no door to the closet. So let's add one. It says show this room's nothing. Let's change that to objects to, to look at our objects. Now the door we're going to add is actually going to be an object because we want it to be dynamic and that we want to be able to remove the door later in the game when Sammy opens it. So I'm going to right click approximately where I want the door to be. I'm going to say new object here. I go over to the object properties and I set the image of the object to 469. Now I'm going to drag the uh, the object in the room down so that the door is right on top of the uh, of where we want it to be. So now, uh, let me drag it over a little bit. So now Mr. Donatello is stuck in the, in the closet like he like he should be, like all Mr. Donatello should be. Uh, no, I guess that was right the first time. Sorry. Um, so now let me click on the object. Let me change the description of the object to closed door. And I'm going to change the name of the object to O for object closed door. Like that so we can refer to it in the script. So now let's set up something called a timer so that we can put, put Mr. Donatello on a timer and have him after three seconds he'll say something in the, in the, in the room. So let's click on events. For the, for the room. Actually, we can select the room instead. I'm going to click on events. And now, the event that we want to, that we want to set up now is, is actually the room before fade in. This, this uh, event right here is really for setting up things in the room. For example, light timers, or if you wanted to set up flags, or, or just to, to sort of do general bookkeeping on the room, or, or initializing of the room before the room is actually drawn to the screen. Well, our timer is, is one of those things. So let's um, before the fade in, let's set up, let's click on um, the ellipsis button. And that creates a new, a new function for us. And now here we want to do a set timer function. Set timer, open parentheses, and now it wants two things from us. It wants a timer ID and a timeout. Well, the timer ID can be any number from 1 to 20. AGS allows up to 20 timers. So I'm going to say 1, comma, and then the timeout. Now, in AGS, there's, there are usually about 40 what are called game loops per second. Um, so basically to get the time, if we wanted him to, uh, this timer to fire after three seconds, what we would do is we just say 40 game loops per second times three seconds is 120 game loops. So that's, that's what we set the timeout to. Basically, the algorithm is you just take the number of seconds you want 
times 40, and that's the number that you want to set there for, uh, for a timer. So in this case, we want 3. 40 times 3 is 120. So now we've got the timer set up. But now we need to actually use that timer. So we go back to the, to the room. We go over to the events of the room again. And now there's another uh, event that we have to set up, and that's for the repeatedly execute. I mentioned this event earlier when I was talking about the, um, the, the events for the room. The repeatedly execute uh, event fires every single game loop. Now, when I keep referring to game loops, what that is is, is, is in the engine, there's actually a loop that happens. There, there's, a set of, there's, there's a set of things that happen in, in the game, and then the, the game resets and it sort of does those over and over again. Uh, and those are called game loops. Well, those again, those happen at, uh, for about 40 times per second. So what this will do, repeatedly execute, is every single time one of those loops occurs, it will call this repeatedly execute. Uh, it will fire this re repeatedly execute event. So this repeatedly execute event basically ends up getting fired uh, at 40 times a second. And, and the reason that you might want this is because maybe you want to check a flag or in our case we want to check a timer we want to see if the timer has expired so what we can do is we can just say to the to AGS hey if the timer has expired have Mr. Donatello say something well what you can do is you can say if now there's a function called is timer expired open parentheses and now it wants a timer ID which timer are you are you wanting to check to see if it's, if, if it's expired well in this case we want to check timer 1 and now you open, you put open curly brace and close curly brace. Um, that's uh, the shift square brace right next to the P key on American keyboards. And what that will do is that will actually, everything within those curly braces is going to be uh, executed if, that, um, if, if the timer has expired in this case. So if the timer has expired, we want Mr. Donatello to say something. Mr. Donatello dot say Sammy, get me out of here. Okay, but there's one more thing we need to do. And after a, a timer has expired, basically it doesn't get called again. It does not get reset unless you set it again. So here we want to, to have Mr. Donatello say, Sammy, get me out of here. And then immediately we want to set that timer again so that after three seconds again, he will, um, he will say the same thing. So set timer, set timer one, timeout value of 120. That way it'll just basically reset the timer so that it will be called again in three seconds. So let's try that out and see how that works. I click run. The game runs. Okay, and after three seconds, Mr. Donatello says, Sammy, get me out of here. Okay, and if we wait another three seconds, he says it again. But notice what's happening every single time he says that. Watch my mouse cursor. Okay, we get an hourglass. If I'm walking somewhere in the room while Mr. Donatello says something, well... If I'm walking over here and Mr. Donatello says something, I can't I can't control Sammy at all while while he's saying that. What I would really like to do is I want this to sort of happen in the background. I don't want to get that uh, hourglass cursor. So the way that you would do that is instead of saying Mr. Donatello or C Donatello dot say, there's another function that we can use that works just like say. It's called say background. So I'm going to change it from, from saying say to say say background. Um, and basically what that does is that says have the character say this, but have him say it in the background so that we don't get an hourglass cursor and it doesn't um, affect um, the player's ability to play the game. So let's run that again. After three seconds, Mr. Donatello says, Sammy, get me out of here. But notice I don't have a... Um, an hourglass cursor anymore. So he keeps saying every three seconds, he's like, Sammy, get me out of here. He's really impatient to get out of the closet. But notice that I can still, what I wanted to show is notice that I can still walk around. Um, I can still look at the books on the wall, uh, on the shelf like we had set up before. So everything, everything is still set up properly. Okay, great. Um, that's really what I wanted to cover in this video is just to, to say, to show how to, um, to set up a timer and to have something happen after that timer uh, is expired. In the next video, we will randomize what Mr. Donatello is saying in the background, and then I'm going to change it from, uh, from three seconds to something a little bit more reasonable so that he's not just continuously saying something. Maybe every 10 seconds we'll, ha we'll have him say something. So that'll be in the next video. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about randomization. See you then, guys.